to set i mean students have to set your target because so that you know where to really focus where to really uh concentrate and how to be participative in order for you to achieve the score you want as i believe uh gp and para have told me that all of you are like a future a students for english okay you are the one targeted for an a for english okay let it be a plus a minus or an A. Okay, so now I want you all to let me know how or what is your target for your SPM English paper. Can you please write down in the comment box whether it's an A, A plus or A minus. Okay, A, 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 A plus. Very good, students. Okay, now let's look at this. Okay, hold on. Let's look at this. Okay, if you could see on the slide, okay, this is just uh, an example, okay, an example of how and what's the range of marks you can get if you have targeted well, okay? So, if you see in the, uh, I mean, on the slide, if you want to achieve 90%, Okay, as you all know, okay, all the four papers, it, it caters 25%. Okay, each of the papers caters 25%. So, let's say for reading, okay, reading, if you want to score an A+, plus, okay, this is just an estimation, okay. If you score 36 marks out of 40, it will bring you to 23%. And if you could see for writing, okay, Writing, if you score 54 out of 60, it will give you about 23%, okay? And this is how it looks like, okay? For speaking, 21 out of 24, and listening, 30 out of, sorry, 26 out of 30. So you can get about 90 plus, which is A plus. Okay, if you want to get an A, okay? This could be your target. And if you want to get just A minus, then you can go for this. Okay, now students, since you are uh, with me, what is your target for all four papers? You can let me know uh, what score you are targeting. Not the percentage, but the score out of 40, 60, and 24, and 30. What are you expecting? What is your target? By now, you should have your target because you are future A students, okay? A plus students. So you should know where you want to focus a lot, where is your weakness, which part you want to really focus on and everything else. So could you please let me know in the chat box, what is your target marks, okay, for all the four papers? Let's take like a few minutes to discuss about it. Students, I'm waiting for your answer. Okay, Chong and you, thank you very much for your response. Reading, okay, you have targeted 35. Okay, how about your uh, writing? Okay, so students, can you let me know which one you are not confident of? Okay, which paper you are not very confident? Which one you feel that, oh no, I'm quite worried about this paper that I might score less? Which one? Writing, okay. Writing, writing, okay. Small, can I hear from you all more? Okay, writing, okay. Speaking, Pavitran is speaking. Okay, Muhammad Nur Fazli is writing. Okay, thank you very much, Muhammad Akil. Okay, paper one, paper two. Okay, so you're confident with paper two writing. Okay, good, good. Thank you very much, students. Okay, I could see that you have clear vision of what you want to get, how you want to score, and what are you going to focus on. Okay, now look at the next slide. We will focus for today writing speaking and listening okay uh, i don't think i can cover reading in two hours so i will try to cover as much as possible for writing reading and uh, sorry writing speaking and listening paper yeah okay oh listening is troublesome for me okay yes akil don't worry 
I will surely uh, give you some tips how you can pay attention to the audio and what are the things you can focus on uh, in order for you to uh, answer easily the questions. Okay, don't worry. Okay, let's move on to paper writing. Okay, writing is paper two. As you all know, okay, it is paper two. Okay, now, I think you are very sure of the format, right? So, you will have email, okay? And then you will have, um, we call it as a guided writing, which is essay and essay. And then you have selections, okay, three questions. And from three questions, you can choose one and write in part three, okay? And the formats can be either article, review, story, or report. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, the assessment scales. Are you all aware of the assessment scale? Do you all know how to score for your, I mean, writing paper? Are you all aware of this? Where and what are you supposed to do? And how are you supposed to write to cater A+. Plus? Okay, we focus to A plus and A. Do you all know uh, exactly how to cater, I mean, your writing to obtain A plus or an A? Yes. Okay. Uh, students, uh, before I continue, I just want to know, do you want me to use dual language or just an English? You want me to use, if you want me to use only English, write English. Okay, good. Orisha Shah. So I'll go on with uh, Orisha. Is there anyone else who want me to use dual language? No, eh? Okay, good. So now look at this. Language, okay, you have four components where you have to score. I think your teacher would have explained well these things to you, okay? So you have language, content, organization, communicative achievement. So I want to know from all of you, how many marks are awarded for all these scales? How many marks given for all these scales? For Okay, you can type here, yeah, my dear students, you can type. So, all together, yes, of course, 20. So, each caters five marks. So, so you all know, I think, yes, very good, five each. Okay, so language, you have to write properly with the proper grammar, uh, sentence structure, and all those things. Content, you have to cater the need of the question. How you organize the essay, okay? And also, how well you can communicate through your essay. Uh, to the examiners, okay? How you can catch their attention is all about communicative uh, achievement. Okay, without wasting time, I'll move on to part one. And I'm not going to explain a lot in part one as I'm quite sure that you as an A student should know how to write uh, email, an email, right? Because it's just 80 words. I think in a glimpse of an eye, like you can just write 80 words. Isn't it? Is it very difficult? I think it's difficult to actually write in 80 words because you can write a lot, but don't do that. Okay, please don't do that. Okay, okay. So if you see it's 80 marks, sorry, 80 words, 20 marks, and actually the task type is informal message. Okay, they can also ask you um, uh, not only email, but some other like messages. Okay, they can ask you like, uh, some other task, okay, but it is a short informal message, okay, so it is, it caters 20 marks, which is out of 60, 20, and you have to write just 80 words, okay. Now, what are the common ways you can respond in email, okay, they can ask you something to suggest, okay, to recommend, to convince, to persuade, to advise or to describe, okay? S some of the ways of responding to uh, messages, okay? Which they can ask you to suggest something, to recommend and all those things. Okay, now let's move on. This is one of the example of questions, okay? I'm not going to do this, okay? Because I will focus more in part two and part three. Okay, so when you read the question, okay, whatever question it is, you have to unwrap the question, okay? Please unwrap the question, read it, and identify what is the task wanted from you, okay? So example, you have to identify the sender, okay? 
type of email and what should you do and of course the language okay what would be the language for uh email what type of language you have to use informal or formal informal or formal email Okay, we call it as informal registers. Okay, you have to use informal registers and it's all in your textbook. Okay, so if you could see here, okay, this is how you can plan the email, right? How you could plan the email. Okay, if you ask me personally, don't use or don't write a lengthy introduction. Please don't write a lengthy introduction. This is a very short one. Okay, just a very short one. 10 to 15 words, okay, 10 to 15 words of uh, introduction, enough, okay, just to introduce, okay, and then the body part is the main focus for you, which are 55 to 60 words, then the closing about 10 words, okay, that's it, keep to this uh, layout, maybe you can, uh, uh, you can plan your email, based on this layout, okay? Now, okay, I'm not, okay, these are the sample introduction you have and the expressions which you can use and everything is in page 19, full blast textbook form four. Okay, if you have the soft copy, please look through it and everything is just there where you can just write whatever you feel like uh, using, okay? And now, Let's move on. Simple way of writing closure, okay, which just like you can just write like, I must go now, keep in touch, which is just seven words. Bye for now, see you soon. Okay, don't make it lengthy. A short introduction and a short closure. Okay, that's it. But the most important thing is the content. Okay, let's move on. Okay, I'm not going. Okay, so whenever you do writing, okay, whenever you do writing, please keep this in your mind, okay? Please, uh, like, uh, remember this kind of checklist, okay? Like, you have to have, whether you have fulfilled all the content, okay? Whether you have written something relevant to the task, whether the reader is fully informed, they have asked you something and have you written something which they really wanted, okay? And then communicative achievement, for an example, like for email, you have to write straightforward, suitable register, remember, okay, it should be informal register. Tone, the tone should be friendly, encouraging, positive and concerned. And you have to organize, okay, when it comes to organization, you have to have uh, connectors, okay, whether the connectors are enough, well organized, okay, and enough number of cohesive devices, remember, for SPM, CFR, writing paper, you must have enough number of cohesive devices. And language for an email, basic vocabulary, okay, simple grammatical forms and good control of language. It's just 80 words, okay, so it's straight to the point and it's like short and sweet. As long as you fulfill the task. Okay, now let's move on. I'm going to go to the second part which is the guided writing, okay? So far clear for email, students, you can type in the chat box. If you feel it's not clear, you want any uh, explanation, further explanation, you want me to explain, okay? Yes, understood, teacher. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's move on. Part two. For part two, it is again 20 marks and formal text okay the task type is formal text okay what are you supposed to do okay types of writing task okay types of writing task you have to describe maybe okay maybe they ask you to choose preference okay maybe they want you to explain about benefits or advantages to explain about drawbacks or disadvantages to present opinions Okay, to agree or disagree, okay, or just like partial agree. And to compare and contrast, to express certainty and to show, show cause and effect. Types of writing tasks they can ask in part two. 
Okay, can I move on, students? Can I go to the next slide? Okay, next. Okay, so useful phrases or structures. Okay, you can use to present opinions. Okay, so you can use, okay, um, uh, you can use different types of sentences to start your uh, points. Okay, to state your opinions, to present your opinions, such as from my perspective, as far as I'm concerned. In my point of view, don't write the same type of sentences, okay? Uh, it might be boring for the examiners and maybe your communicative achievement part can be, I mean, the marks can be reduced, okay? Because it's not catchy enough. It's not um, attractive enough, okay? So try to uh, write different types of sentences, okay? In order for you to get a uh, good marks okay so it is generally accepted that in my eyes personally i believe okay examples of uh, phrases or structures which you can use to present opinions okay now to justify or give reasons okay so these are the sentences okay some of the examples which you can use to state okay or to give reasons okay the main reason i feel this way is okay Okay, next, I'll move on. Useful phrases, structures to explain about advantages and disadvantages. If you want to talk about advantages, you can say like the positive points include, okay, the most outstanding benefit is. When you want to say about disadvantages, you can say like the main downside of, what is the point, what is the content, is what, okay? And next, okay. This is how you can write an essay discussing advantages and disadvantages. Okay, you can introduce the subject of the essay and both sides of the topic. Okay, example, okay, team project, this is the question time, huh? I mean the introduction. Team project work is becoming more and more popular in school nowadays. Some teachers and students believe that it has many advantages while others disagree. So this one, you have to explain the advantages and also disadvantages. So when this type of questions, what are you supposed to do? You have to like refer to the advantages or disadvantages in separate paragraphs, cover both sides of the topics equally because they want to know both sides, okay? not only the advantages but not only the disadvantages if they want to know both you have to cover it equally and then you can make conclusion by saying all those things okay and okay how you can start the essay i feel this is important okay as how people when when someone says um see someone uh, the first impression is always important right same goes for an essay how you start the essay when it, the introduction is always important how you start the first sentence the first word maybe these are the things which catches the examiner's attention so how you can uh, write introductions example the first one repetition okay you repeat how are you going to repeat i will let you know in a while you can start like listing, okay? You can ask questions, describe the setting or nature, okay? You can start by uh, uh, explaining like a flashback, personal experience, okay? You can use action verbs and also strong emotions, okay? How you can do that? Repetition, okay? Okay. Students, I want to ask you, how normally you start your essay? How do you start your essay? Which method do you use to start your essay? Students, are you all there? Fact. Okay, good. Fact. Okay. More? I'm waiting for... Other answers? Okay, uh, so far only one. 
Okay, so fact. So Lee, maybe you can also try these methods. Okay, any of this to write your introduction. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, but how you repeat? Okay, money, money, money. Let's say the question is something regarding money or savings or um, related topics. Okay, so you can start like money, money, money. All of us need money. Okay, each of us has our own ways of spending money. Surely, I wish to spend my money in my own way. Remember, part two, how many words? Students, how many words for part two? I see. Total number of words for part two essay. Okay, is everyone tired after school? Okay, Orisha, thank you. It's 120 words, 150, yes. 120, 250 words, yeah. It's not until 200, no. It's 120, 250. Okay, students. So next, how 200 is a lot, my dear. Okay, 200 is a lot for part two essay. Don't write more than what they ask. Okay, please don't write uh, more than what they ask. Uh, this is because uh, it's going to take a lot of time, first of all, and you might do more mistakes. Okay, so let's say they ask you to write like 120 to 150 words then you can go up to 160 plus minus 10 words, okay? So now listing again, okay? The second way how you can start your essay is by listing, okay? You can write like buying a bungalow, you list down things, okay? Buying a bungalow, Ferrari and a diamond. It's okay, it's okay, darling, it's okay, no problem, okay? And diamond ring will be a reality when I have a lot of money. I'm not rich, sorry, eh? the spelling error. But I have my own ways of spending my money, okay? And you can also start like with flashback, okay? How do you start uh, with flashback? Last year, okay? What happened last year, last month, last week, okay? This is how you can start. And next, have a series of verbs. Yes, past. Yes, very good, Orisha, very good, okay? If I'm not uh, pronouncing your name properly, I'm very sorry because I'm just reading through your names on the chat box, okay? And have a series of verbs. My brother stands in the long queue, waits patiently and later takes out his credit card huh, and pays for his toys. So can you see? Okay, there are a series of verbs, okay? And then... There are many more ways you can actually start, but this type of uh, introduction might be interesting, okay? Might be interesting and the, and the teachers or the examiners might feel a bit um, like interested, okay? Attracted to your essay. Now, strong emotion, okay? How? I always hate when it, sorry, I hate it when my brother spent thousands of ringgit buying expensive toys, okay? See the hater, how much heat, okay? And then he is already 30 years old. I will never spend my money the way he does, okay? So this is how they start. Example, with strong emotion, okay? So can you all remember how you can start your essay, the different types of introductions? Can you all list down to me? In the chat box, can you all remember? I know you have notes, but without referring to the notes, can you all remember? How can you start your essay? Okay, so there are repetition, listing. Yes, thank you, Laila Tool. Yes, questions, describe the setting, flashback, action verbs, strong emotions, okay? And as I saw just now, one of the students said, true facts. Yes, can, no problem. Okay. And now let's move on. Okay. These are the types of cohesive devices you can use in your essay. Okay. There are a lot more, but this is just an example. Okay. For you. So to introduce supporting details, how you want to introduce contrasting ideas, giving op opinion and generalizing. So these are some of the cohesive devices which you can use in your 
as it. Remember, cohesive devices you must use, okay? Because there is one element in your assessment skill. Okay, are you all clear so far? Is it clear? Is it clear, my dear students? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, now look at this question. Your class has been discussing the challenging activities that you and your classmates find interesting. And your teacher has asked you to write an essay about these challenging activities, okay? So what is your task now? Identify the task. Let me know the three things that you have to fulfill in order to answer this question. What is your task? Your content marks comes from what? How can you score for your content marks? Which one do you have to fulfill? Challenging activities, okay. So what is the main question? The three bullets, okay, good. So um what you would like to do which means the challenging activities okay and why yeah why okay why you have to give reasons not one reason but reasons and where you plan to do them there are three tasks for you to fulfill in order to get the content marks the full content marks and the other elements of the assessment scale okay let's see you have this question for your exam. How would you start your essay? How would you start your essay? What type of introduction are you going to use? Remember, you have to plan your essay like for two or three minutes. I know you are good in English, okay? You can just start and write and write and write, but don't forget to draft your essay first. I mean, plan your essay first. Okay, not draft, but plan your essay. You have to plan so that you don't stuck at any point. Okay, and your points just like you can write it fluently and then it is like organized well. Okay, so now let me know how are you going to start your essay? Can there be more than one activity? Okay, look at the question again, darling. Your class has been discussing the challenging activities, okay? About the challenging activities that you would like to do. Okay, the last part, he has asked you to write an essay about the challenging activities that you would like to do. What you would like to do. Yes, Ken? Okay, because the challenging activities, because of the plural that, okay? So now let me know what would be your introduction. How are you going to write your introduction? Which method are you going to use to write the introduction? From, I think about six types of introduction types where you can start your essay I have shared just now. So which one are you going to use? Can I get the answers? Can you all just type in the chat box? Okay, I think all of you are very tired. Okay, let's move. Listing, okay, thank you, my dear. Thank you so much, listing, okay. Come on. Anyone else wants to uh, say or tr personal experience? Okay, good, thank you. Okay. Okay, good, okay. So look at this, okay, how you can plan your essay, okay, how you can plan your essay for introduction, okay, the introduction guides the reader to the topic. So that's why I say the introduction is very important. Describe the setting, okay, up here. It should begin with the sentence that catches the reader's interest. Look at this, okay, this is why I said your introduction is very important because that is the first impression of the examiner. Okay, the introduction should give more some background information on the topic. Okay, and your body, 
you have to plan and what are you going to write for your conclusion okay now let's move on okay let's say you write like this how many marks you can score and compared to this okay which one is better this one or first or second which one is better but the second one is quite lengthy yeah it's 202 words but which one is better first or second second okay why you say second is better why are you saying that second is better what criteria are there for you to say that the second one is better not the first one first one is just merely stating what type of activity and that candidate is just writing the reason okay just write uh, as what needed that's it okay there's no uh, less okay i would say less cohesive devices used okay explanation is not really well explained okay uh, the reasons are not well explained okay but in second essay if you read through second essay yes catchy very good okay yes first one is too short very good okay so the second one is catchy okay and there are cohesive devices okay and it is organized well okay it's organized well so these are the criteria for you to know in order for you to obtain the full marks why not okay 20 over 20 so look at this i enjoy doing challenging activities a hobby a hobby i developed with my twin when we were visiting our cousin in the city here i discuss i will discuss my two most favorite activities which are parker and abseiling okay i want to ask you do you think that this introduction is um, catchy? Do you think that uh, you can actually improvise this introduction? Can we improvise this introduction? How can we improvise this introduction? I enjoy doing challenging activities, a hobby I developed with my twin when we were visiting our cousin in the city. Here, I will discuss my two most favorite activities. Okay, please, can I know how you can improvise this introduction? To make it more uh, catchy, okay, interesting. Add a question. Thank you, my dear. Yes, add a question maybe, okay and um, maybe you can use some good words okay rather than the simple kind of uh, vocab okay strong emotion very good thank you so much yes strong emotion okay it would work better here okay so this is how you can actually improvise your essays okay let's say now you have uh, some pieces of exam i mean essays with you okay read through all these essays which you have written Okay, for your teachers for in the classroom so what you have to do once finish this workshop you can read through all your essays and then try how or analyze how you can actually improve your essay so that all of you can get a plus or an a okay let's target for the best okay so now use advanced vocabularies yes yeah, sophisticated words okay now look at this okay i will recommend you okay to plan your essay like this okay where you can have introduction about 30 words okay your body okay which is the main content point okay you can have 35 40 or 30 okay and closing just 15 words so you can always plan in this range okay don't write a lot okay don't write a lot because you might uh, really uh, like you know waste your time in this part and like you won't enough time in the next part which is part three because you have to write about 250 words there and uh, the priority i mean you have to really focus on how are you going to organize that essay well 
Okay, I I'm not saying that these two is not important, but you have to focus more. I mean, you have to write better in the third one also. So don't waste so much of time writing second part. Okay, so don't write a lot. Write as what they want, but make it interesting. Okay, are you all clear so far with a uh, second part? Do you have any question? Okay, so I'll move on. Clear, yeah, thank you, my dear. So here goes a reminder, okay? This one I take from the examination syndicates um, guideline, okay? So part two essay, the candidate is asked to write about three main aspects on the topic and to provide a rational for their point of view. Remember, a rational, which means they want you to give reasons. Always there are reasons, okay? They want you to give reasons. So you better to have reasons, okay? You better to explain why. If you don't do that, okay, your score is going to be four or three because it is considered as omission, where you don't give the reasons, okay? So as for the question, you have to give the reasons. You see, reasons for your choice, okay? There's always a statement or a question asking some reasons for one of the question, okay? So you have to remember that you must give the reasons, okay? Justify it. Why you say that is always important for you to get the five marks. I'm not going to talk about three marks, four marks. Our aim is to get five marks. So then don't omit the reasons, okay? Just explain. Just whatever you say, give reason. Okay? Are you all clear with this? Okay. So again, the checklist. Make sure you fulfill the task. Okay? The content, CA, which is communicative achievement, whether you have organized, whether you have used cohesive devices, remember. <coughs> if you are someone who always uh, don't care or don't um, take much attention to the cohesive devices, make sure this time you pay attention and you write, okay? Because this is also one of the criteria in the marking because I have taken this from the examination syndicates uh, guideline, okay? It's not from my own. So they themselves have stated that enough number of cohesive devices. So I guess that you all of you know okay but it's just that sometimes you don't use okay but this time i feel you will use okay so you have to use communicative achievement sorry cohesive devices okay for you to get full marks in organization and your language should be what uses everyday vocabulary and display a range of grammar remember when you write sentences and I'm quite sure that you can write pretty good uh, complex sentences. So write better uh, complex sentences in order for you to get good marks for your language as well. Okay, let's move on. Part three. Okay, part three. How many types of essays? I mean, um, I'm not asking you how many questions, yeah, but how many types of essays are there for part three that which they can ask you? Four. Thank you, Akia. Thank you very much. Okay. There are four types. Okay. So I'll go on with the first one, which is article. Okay. So for article, example of question can be like this. Okay. Write an answer to one of these, uh, sorry, one of the questions. Okay. As you all know, you have three questions in part three. Okay. You have three questions in part three. You have to choose one. Remember, you have to choose one, okay. There are some good students, okay, what you do, you know, you like to write two essays because sometimes you say you are not confident, okay. I have seen some uh, scripts where students tend to write two essays. Please don't do that. Please don't waste your time, okay. Plan well your time, okay. Plan well, okay. What are you going to write? Before you start writing, try to brainstorm ideas, okay? Draft, okay? You must have your planning. Don't 
just write. Okay, then you're going to stuck at one point and you tend to change the question. Don't do that. Okay, don't do that. If you want to get an A plus, don't do that. Okay, so now what are you going to write here? Indoor versus outdoor sports. And you must remember one thing, yeah? All the questions, most of the questions for writing, reading, either speaking or listening, is going to cater the syllabus in your um, English CFR. And most of it is going to be something related to your textbook. Okay? Oh, I'm not always stable in introduction, teacher. Okay, start from today. Try to, yes, try to focus on your introduction if you're not good in introduction. Okay, what, which way are you going to use? You can still apply the one I have told you just now. Listing, questioning, and all those methods of starting your essay. Okay, Orisha, I hope it will help you. Okay, so focus. Which one are you going to, um, uh, which method are you going to use? Hey, students, you don't have, I mean, a lot of time for you to really like, you know, practice each and everything. So now it is your focus. Which one are you going to focus? How are you going to start? Okay, which way are you going to use? So practice with that more. It will easy for you then during the exam to write the proper introduction, proper essay, and how are you going to expand your essay? That is important things. Okay, now look at this. You have to write indoor versus outdoor sports. And I am very sure that you have learned about indoor and outdoor sports. And it's also in your textbook, which is in your download and also your full blast textbook. Okay. So the topics are going to be from the textbook. Okay. It's not going to be somewhere from like outside of the syllabus or something which you don't have ever listened to or ever read before. Okay. It's all from the syllabus. So what are what is the question all about? What is meant by indoor and outdoor sports? What are the advantages of each? What is the preference? Give your reasons. Okay, I want to ask, how many of you would choose this question if the, like this of question comes out to you in your exam? How many of you will choose this question? Let's say this is one of the questions in your paper, in your writing paper for part three. Will you choose this question? Um, teacher Sarah, we have students um, raising their hands up. No, yeah, okay, yes. Uh, would you like Ganis Warren? Do you have anything to ask? And Chan Chung Wei, oh no, okay. I think they are <laughs> wrongly. Uh, accidentally, accidentally. Uh, yes, right. okay. So, okay, let's move. Can I continue? Okay, now. Yeah, sure. Okay, so students, I have asked you just now one question. Okay. I will prefer story. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I really need your response. Huh? What type of question do you prefer to write? Story? Article? Okay. Putri say yes. She would consider writing this question. Very good. Okay. For me, I'll choose article. Very good. Orisha. Prefer review. Sharmita. Okay. Which is shown now. Okay. Good. So now, let's say you don't have other choice. You don't have idea of writing other types of essays. And this is the only thing you like, oh, I have to write this type, this question. I mean, I have to answer this question because I do not know how to write the other questions. Okay, suddenly you are like panic and you do not know how to write the others. So, what are you going to do? How are you going to write your introduction? Plan well, okay? And you have your task. Okay, what is your task? Can you type in the chat box? What is, is, what is your task for this question? Do you need to explain indoor and outdoor sports? Okay, first question, my question. Do you need to explain indoor and outdoor sports? You have to, um, yes. Yes, thank you, Sharmita. Yes, you have to explain, right? Okay, you have to tell what is meant by indoor and outdoor sports. And you have to write the advantages of both. Not only one, both. Okay, what would happen if, let's say, you overlook the question and you felt like you only have to write the advantages of only one type of sport? What? 
Is there any possibilities for you to lose mark in the content point? Let's say if you don't, yes, not deduct marks, you will not get marks. Okay, you will not get marks, full marks for your content. So that's why I say always unwrap the question. Read the question properly, what they want. Okay, what is your preference? And now, yes, now, now you have to write, okay? What is your preference? Then you tell, okay? Towards the end, okay, or any part of your essay, you have to tell which one you would prefer, whether uh, indoor or outdoor. And then you must give your reasons, remember. <coughs> Again, plural, reasons, okay? Give more reasons. Explain well, okay? Use advanced words. Make sure you use complex sentences. Cohesive devices. Don't forget all those things. Okay, is it clear enough for article? Okay, now let's move on. Okay, this one, I'm not going to discuss this. Okay, there's one question. Okay, so... Okay, for article, okay, for article, not only article, I would say, for all, okay, for all the questions in writing, you can focus these themes, okay, people and culture, health and environment, science and technology, these are all from your syllabus, okay, so all from your syllabus, and then, okay, look at this, the format, okay, look at the format, okay, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, so look at the format. Okay, how, what is the format? You will have your title, okay? And then you will have your name here, by and your name, okay? Then you start your essay. First paragraph, second, and you outline your essay. Look at this, okay? I never been tried that question. I always choose article. Okay, yes, okay. Now look at this. 30 words for your introduction. Okay, this is how um, I would suggest you can write your essay for an article, okay, and your requirements part, the task, okay, you can write 65, 65 and 65, then your closing can be 25. So, your introduction should be catchy, but not too lengthy, it's just 30 words, okay, and your body part okay if you come here it's about uh it's about how many words the i think teacher overlook my above but i have i never been trying that question i always choose article two. okay um yes yes i will come I, I will discuss about review don't worry hold on i'm coming there okay yes hold on okay this is the first part, first, first, I mean, in third part, first thing which I'm going to focus, which I focus is, right, article, then I'll go on with the next uh, questions, okay? So, don't forget the format, okay? You must have title and then you must have by, okay? Now, you see, you must have complex sentences, okay? Those who are not very sure how to write complex sentences, when you use this type of words, okay, and it is something complex sentences okay learn how to write complex sentences because your target is a plus two a okay and next again the same thing okay don't forget okay your checklist remember and next review yes okay yes the part where uh your i think okay wait before that how many of you would choose review how many of you would choose review how many of you love to write reviews If you say review me, 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 me. Okay, very good. Yes. Okay. If I am also one of the candidates for uh, SPM this year, I think I would have, I mean, I also would choose review because I have like, I'm really into reviews. Okay. I love reviews, writing reviews, saying something about something, right? Okay. Why? Teacher, why review is easy? Someone say no. Okay. Orisha, I want to know why you say no for review. Why you feel that review is difficult? 
why you feel that review is difficult. Okay, you have to know, uh, uh, when you write reviews, it's actually, um, it's, it's about the same. You are not going to write something extraordinary or something very different or something which is not, um, like, like you can't think or what. It's, it's just a review you are going to say about something. Maybe it might be about, look at this, okay? Types of reviews, okay? What can be asked when it comes to review? They can ask you to write review about movie, mall, book, hotel, restaurant or cafe, sports or games, services, okay? Services like such as delivery, health, transportation and welfare. And actually, if you let's say you are trying to write a review, you can actually plan your essay very well, okay? I do not know, but food, yes. Food, when you say food, yes. Correct, okay. Uh, you can also review about food, okay. So, okay, wait. Let's see. They ask you to write about movie. Okay, wait. Okay, what are the two things which, like, you can really cater uh, the same type of reviews? Example, restaurant. When, if let's say you have planned, you have, like, idea of writing a review for a restaurant or cafe. So let's say they ask for food. You can still use that idea to write for food. Okay. Let's say you have idea of writing a review for movie, but they ask you about a book. So it is alike. Okay. Movie review and book review is alike, but it's just that some parts or some words you have to choose. So you can think of something like that. Okay, is it something like describe? Okay, Orisha, movie review, review. Okay, sorry, I'm not movie review, review. Review means uh, in Malay, we say ulasan, ulasan. You explain about something, uh, you say about something. Example, okay, people ask you today, hey, how was teacher Sahara session? You have to review about my workshop. Okay, you have to review about my workshop. Example to your friend. Okay, one of your friend, okay, it's not here, okay? She has some problem and she couldn't attend the session. So you have to review my session to your friend. What are you going to say to your friend about me? Ah, yes, Orisha, very good. Yes, review means it's like that. You have to tell about something to someone who have never gone to the place, who have never watched the movie, maybe who have never read the book, uh, who have never tried the food, we have never tried the services. So you're going to review, or you are go, you're going to tell them what are they going to like expect when they go there? What uh, they, they, they can actually assume or they can um, like, you review, okay? You tell them what is the thing all about. Okay, teacher, what is the best way to start a review? Hold on, my dear, I'm coming here, okay? Okay, so come, let's go on. So the next slide, okay. So this is how you can plan, okay. This is how you can plan. So your introduction can be 30, okay. Your body can be 65, okay. Where you give a brief summary or overview about what are you going to write, okay. And then, okay, uh, a bad review. Okay, hold on, uh, hold on. I'll come to this point also, okay. Many students like to ask this question, okay. Negative part of a review. Can we state negative points when we write a review? Okay, hold on, I'm coming. Okay, so review, requirement. So these are the requirement parts. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, so it's, it's about the same, okay? The layout is about the same. Okay, now, okay, movie review. I think you're all very familiar writing movie reviews. How many of you say, I mean, feel like, teacher, if movie review, I can really write very well. How many of you think that way? Can you write one if you say like, yes, movie review is my choice. I really can write very well. If you feel that, then write number one for movie review. Only Sharmita has answered. Anyone else going to write? Oh, no. None of you prefer writing a movie review. You feel it's very difficult. Farah is one. Very good. Thank you. Okay, yes. Writing a movie review is actually very easy. Okay, it's just that you have to remember a movie. Okay, just remember the, uh, uh, the director's name, which year it was produced, and then uh, the actor, the actress's name, and then the setting. Okay, if you see, 
writing a movie review is explained very well in your textbook, which is in full blast, okay? If you have a soft copy or you don't have, ask your teacher, okay? Or you can find in Telegram groups, okay? I think you can find easily the soft copy of full blast textbook, okay? And the page is like in page 93, everything is there, okay? Someone asked me how to start a review. When you want to write a review, start with general information. It's not only applicable for movie, but also for everything. Whatever you are going to write a review, okay? You can start uh, general information by asking a question maybe. Maybe you can start uh, by listing or you can also start by stating like strong emotion, okay? Strong emotion. Then you start your uh, review by giving general information. Example, wow, it was a wonderful holiday I had last month in Park Royal Penang Island. So I started with a strong emotion. Then I would say, I would explain Park Royal Penang is situated where, 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 okay? And then how is the environment, okay? These are the general information about Park Royal Hotel. I'm talking about a hotel, okay? So if it comes with review of a uh, film, Okay, if it's a film review, then you go with the general, whatever it is, whatever it is, your introduction is always general information. Okay, so if a movie, then title, directed by, and all those things. Okay, you can always refer this to your textbook. Okay, don't forget. And your paragraph two is going to be a brief summary if it's a movie. Okay, or if let's say, uh, okay, I'll talk about the other types of reviews in a while, okay, so I go with the movie first, and then the third paragraph, you can write about scene, plot, and all the other elements. And remember, okay, remember, whatever reviews you're writing, be descriptive. Write it, okay, in a descriptive way. Explain it well. Use nice words, sophisticated words, okay? And now, your conclusion, okay, your conclusion is going to be the recommendation. How, what is your feeling? What do you feel about the place, about the movie, about the book, about the service? Would you recommend that, okay? All those things come in your conclusion. Okay, so now, English download, okay, you have this about review of a holiday, okay, for teenagers. So this is how they have written a review of a summer camp for teenagers. So you can actually look at page 118 to 119, read through how they have written a review of a holiday designed for teenagers. And they have written very well, okay? It's very nicely written. So you can read and get the idea of how to write about a holiday, okay? And now, you, okay, how are you going to write about cafe? What you can write in cafe? Let's say you're asking about cafe. What are you going to state when they ask about a cafe? Can you write, I mean, can you just type the answers in the chat box? Let's say if it's a cafe. What are you going to say when it's about cafe? Of course, you are going to write about their food, right? Cafe. They are going to have food. Yes, someone? What else? The environment. Food, service, yes, the ambience, ambience is the environment, okay, yes, nice. Okay, someone asked me whether we can include the negative point or not. I would say personally, don't write everything negative, okay. Maybe at one point, you can say, okay, example for cafe. You have visited the cafe, you have gone for a dinner and... The only setback of the cafe is that the toilet is filthy, okay? I could not, um, like, you, 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 you explain about the toilet is filthy. You can't, like, you can't accept it. That's the only uh, negative part of the cafe. So don't write much of negative things, okay? Try to be as positive as you can. But you can include the negative part, but not a lot. Are you all okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yes, Beverly, just yes. So, um, I don't know who asked this now about the negative point of the review. So, as again, I would like to repeat that um, when you write negative part, don't write a lot, just include 
a little. Okay? Okay, now, mall. Same, mall. What are there in the mall? Okay? The ambience, the environment, okay? Uh, and the price. Maybe there are cafes in the mall. Okay? And yes, you can write whatever you feel about, you feel like reviewing. And remember, it's about five paragraphs. So plan your essay. Novel. Novel, I would say, okay, it is about the same like a film review. Okay, you should you would have your characters, okay, but in movie you have actors and actresses. And for novel, you have author. For movie, you have um, director. So it's a similar. So try to like you know um try to think of how you can make it as interesting as possible when you write reviews, okay? And resort. This is about resort, maybe like holiday resort or any resorts you have just recently visited and they ask you to write a review. What points, what are the points you can include for a review of a resort? What are the points you can include? And if they ask you about resort. Again, the ambient, the environment, the service, okay? And um, maybe they have a cafe in the, in the resort, okay? So all those things you can explain. Event, don't forget, okay? They can also ask you to write a review about an event, okay? About an event, okay? What type of event? Maybe um, an event you have recently participated or an event you have just... Um, I don't know how, but then it's all about an event. So how are you going to review, write a review about an event? What are the things you can include when it is about event? Any idea? Students? You can write who participated, okay, the event's purpose, okay, the objective of the event, okay, and how they have organized the event, yes, maybe a concert, right? Okay, so all those things you have to cater when you write a review about an event. Okay, now let's move on. So don't forget, don't always use the same type of words when you describe uh, something, okay? So use different types of words, okay? I think you are quite good when it comes to um, the usage of vocab, okay? So again, don't forget all these things which I have shared earlier. And now let's move on to story. Okay, story. Okay, how many of you love to write story? How many of you love to write story? You just love to write story. You feel like, okay, story is my choice. Always the first choice. If yes, then put number one there. Muhammad Akil, very good. Okay, yes. When you write a story, remember, you must remember this graph, okay? Your story cannot be very plain, okay? It cannot be plain. It must be like this, okay? The graph must be like this, a bell-shaped graph. Why, okay? Whenever you write a story, remember like people is watching your movie. Someone is watching whatever you have written, story, okay? So, do you want the, the, the person to switch off their TV or turn off, turn off their TV or just continue watching, okay? So, this is what, um, this is what always, whenever I ask my students, okay, let's say the students are writing, um, uh, their story, I would say that, okay, you want me to continue read your story or just like, okay, just close the book and just go walk off. Okay, so it's like that. Whenever you write a story, you must have this rising action, climax, okay, falling action and the ending. Okay, and you must have background in the introduction part. Make it as interesting as possible, okay? When you write stories, actually, you can write a lot. Uh, I mean, like, you can use a lot of sophisticated words, okay? You can make it as interesting as possible. And you, but remember to plan, yeah? Before you write your story, plan first, okay? Because when you write a story, organization is important. Okay, you have to organize your story very well. If so, that it catches the 
examiner's attention. C A. Okay. Understand? Is it clear enough? Yes. When you write, I'm coming to that. Okay. So again, you have this plan. Okay. And I'm not going to talk about that much. Okay. So what type of stories can be asked? Okay. What type of stories can be asked? Failure, success, challenges. <clears throat> challenges will change you. Okay. Determination, courageous. Okay. Diligence, poor. Rich, weak, strong, problems, solutions. Okay, these types of stories, okay, might come out. Okay, now, again, in a full blast textbook, there are a lot of ways how can you start and make it an interesting story. How to write an interesting story. Everything is there. Okay, and now let's move on. Yes, the linking words, the phrases. And, okay, I'm not going to this. Uh oh, I'm not going to discuss this. Okay, this is a type of essay which is in your textbook. Okay, you can raise your hand. Okay, uh, yeah, in your textbook. Okay, and then, okay, and next, oops, okay, sorry. Okay, yes, can you see this? Someone said, right? Just now, Muhammad Akil said, can include dialogue. Yes. So, to make it interesting, don't forget to use direct speech, questions, exclamation marks, okay? Adverbs, adverbs, okay? Uh, adverbial phrases, like suddenly, fortunately, okay? A variety of adjectives. Don't forget adjectives, okay? When you write, uh, uh stories it must be descriptive okay expressions or idioms and don't forget for a story you must have five senses okay try to use the senses to explain the uh situation okay to make it as descriptive as possible okay so these things could help you to make your story more interesting. Okay. Is it clear? Do you get some ideas? Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, the checklist. Okay, don't forget the checklist. Okay, please, please don't forget. Make sure you have fulfill all these tasks okay if you want to get an a or a plus or a minus okay now report okay do you like to write report okay um there is no bonus mark i'm not sure so sure about bonus marks but somehow it will help to attract the examiner's attention where you might score a uh, well in communicate sorry in uh, ca okay you might achieve uh, attract the uh, examiner's attention because you have used idioms well in your story or in your writing okay but don't use that uh, for the second part, yeah? Second part, no. Part two, no, because it's a, it's a formal task, okay? No. But in story, yes, you can use, okay? It's based on task type. Don't use idioms in formal type of essays. Remember, don't use idioms or phrasal verb in your uh, formal essays, okay? Now, report. Report. How many likes to write report? Article, no. Okay, no. It's a formal writing. So, please don't use uh, idioms and too much of sophisticated words in uh, formal essays. Okay, report. Yes, report is also quite easy. Okay, if you ask me. Okay, how? Task fulfillment. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, content. Okay, Present simple and past simple, you must use passive forms. Remember, for report passive forms, uh, you must use more passive forms, okay? And it is all in your full blast and also your download textbook, okay? Please ask your teacher if you're not sure of how to write in passive form, okay? Because reports suggested to write in passive forms, okay? Adjectives to explain, okay? Now... 
Whenever you read the question, don't forget to highlight or underline the keywords. Remember, draft your plan. Okay, plan your essay. Know the layout. Write in paragraphs. Okay, I still have students, good students, who don't prefer writing in paragraphs. Okay, and please don't do that. Okay, please write in paragraphs. Handwriting, please, students. Okay. Uh, some uh, good students, you have problem with your handwriting. Please make it clearer, okay? Why? Because you must remember all the scripts are scanned, okay? Scripts are scanned and teachers have to, the examiners have to mark like, you know, uh, on the laptop screen, okay? Laptop screen and we have to just use the mark, uh, sorry, the mouse to mark your script. So it is going to be really stressful if your writing is not clear and neat. Okay, please. If you feel that you have made a, wrong, a mistake, just, just draw a line, okay? And just start with the next uh, sentence or whatever, okay? Don't scribble on it and um, make it as neat as possible. And also make sure your writing is clear. Okay, make it, uh, don't write very small. Please don't write very small. It's really hard, difficult to read on laptop screen when it is very small. Okay, please take note of all this. Okay, some students, you are very good in writing. Your English is very good. Okay, your sentence, everything is very good. And we love reading your script. But the only problem is your handwriting. It is, it is so troublesome for us to really look through the laptop to go through your pages. Okay, so make sure your writing, your work is neat. Okay, please. Okay, students. Now, when you write your, yes, yes, on laptop. Okay, it's not a uh, hard copy. Yeah? Okay, since last year. Okay, just leave it that side. Okay, so conclude or summarize your report. Okay, so when you write your report, you must conclude or summarize. And then now, see, everything is in your textbook. Okay, everything is in your textbook. So when you want to write a report, you can use or you can refer to full blast page one, two, three. How to start. There are ways, okay, you have to start this format, you have to use, okay, how you can start the introduction, okay, the main part, how you can sum up, okay, and next, this is a part where also in full blast, page one to two, remember, remember, when you write report, you must have headings, you must have headings, okay, and now, Example for this question, what would be your headings? Okay, what would be your headings? Kalau soalan macam ni keluar. What is your headings? First, of course, you will have introduction. Okay, and the last one is going to be conclusion. So, in the middle, two, three, four. Okay, plan what is going to be your headings. Maybe places available. Okay. Cost, the other one, and another one maybe is recommendation, okay? And next, okay? Remember, you have to write 200 to 250, okay? Formal account of an event or situation, maybe possible topics, okay? Come up with a plan, don't forget, okay? Don't forget, you always must have plan, okay? Task fulfillment, past simple tense, okay, and then action verbs, adjectives. This is how it looks like, okay, the format, the layout, okay. This one will be, okay, uh, this thing, it, it will be here, uh, not, not towards this side, okay, it's going to be towards the uh, left side, okay. So, two from subject, and then you have your introduction, and then these headings based on the question, okay. Third and fourth is also based on the question, the headings, and then you will have conclusion. Okay, report about school facilities. Okay, this is in your uh, pulse, sorry, uh, yeah, pulse. Okay, and then, uh, sorry, close up, not pulse. It's in your close up textbook, which is form three paper, sorry, form three textbook. Okay, and see. They have introduced report in Form 3 itself, which is PT3, okay? So, you have to know also about how to write a report, okay? Make it formal. Please don't use idioms in reports, okay? 
and uh, we got not uh, we don't have much time to practice but let's say this type of questions come up then uh, it's about school facility right a report summarizing two facilities mentioned in the survey okay so your rep report should be should have the following okay what are the school facilities chosen for the survey okay whether you chose a classroom or library and then these advantages and suggestions to upgrade their facilities so the layout is like this remember then you will like you can plan okay you can plan okay uh, you can draft your plan like this something like this what are you going to write in your introduction okay another heading is about classroom another heading is about uh, library and one more is conclusion okay even four is okay not bad okay and when you write conclusion you can write the uh, recommendations okay and yes sorry uh, for now that's all for writing paper so um, are you all clear with writing four types of essay article review story and report and the part two essay and also part one how many of you would choose a or b or c for writing paper Thank you so much. Thank you so much, my dear students. So I would, uh, I now I will share about how to do your speaking paper. Okay, let me stop this presentation and uh, okay, yeah, okay. I will go with speaking. Okay. Okay, can I see the screen? Is it clear? Can I? Okay, oops. Okay, how many of you have difficulties in uh, speaking paper? How many of you feel like teacher very difficult to do speaking teacher i am not very confident when it comes to speaking uh -oh. okay so wait uh, i don't know technology always not friendly wait, uh, hold on sorry Okay, good. Okay, so now, yes, afraid, introvert. Okay, darling, don't worry. Okay, uh, just forget about everything when you start speaking. Okay, try to be confident. Just, okay, is it clear? Orisha, is the screen clearer now? Is it big enough? Orisha, is it big enough? Yes, teacher. Okay, good. Okay, so now, uh, students, who oh, you think that teacher, I'm very scared. Okay, I'm very like, you know, I feel uh, I, I'm not confident enough to speak. Don't worry. Okay, just like you feel like there's no one in front of you. Okay, you just think that there's no one in front of you. And you just think that whatever you say is correct. So just say, say, it, just say, it, okay. So don't like, you know, you don't feel like you're not confident enough. No, no, no. Please throw away all that from your mind and be just be confident and just say whatever you feel uh, that you feel like you're saying it. Okay, because there are prompts when the in the speaking question, there are prompts. Actually, you can talk using the prompts. Okay, just say whatever they ask through the prompts. Okay, so now. And remember, time is very important, okay? Time, you have to really plan your time. When it's a speaking paper, please plan your time. Don't waste so much of time by just pausing. Um, um, uh, don't say that much because you only have one minute for individual long run and there's another even for group discussion, okay? So now, 
I think you're quite sure of the parts, okay? The first part, you don't have any marks, okay? There, there's no marks awarded for the part one. It's just to make you uh, feel um, like, uh, you know, comfortable with the situation. So that's why they have the part one where they just ask you about about you, how you come to school, and what's your favorite activity, all those things, okay? But marks start, I mean, marks are awarded from part two, and uh, starting from part two and part three, okay? So, for part one, okay, this is how you will be, the sitting would be like this, okay? I think you're all very clear. And remember, for speaking, total of 24 marks is awarded okay so try to get as much as possible because i am quite sure that all of you can speak you have ideas okay you have ideas you can speak it's just that like sometimes you know you feel like the words stuck over here and it's not coming out through your mouth okay so just avoid all those things and then just focus and then just say it out and the important thing is just say it out okay now okay now look at this okay two score well okay let's say you want to get teacher i want to get really good marks teacher okay so then look i mean focus on your grammar vocabulary and communicative competence okay so how grammar what type of grammar you must use good degree of accuracy okay you must have your grammar should be accurate okay this is for band five score five okay you will have until six okay six six and six okay so let's say you want to get five what range of simple and some complex grammatical structures remember you see again complex okay and cohesive devices even speaking they want cohesive devices vocab you see you must have wide range of vocabulary okay and you have must have exchange views wide range of familiar topics okay convey relevant meaning with good vocabulary choice look at this vocabulary choice good okay to achieve how you want to attract the one sitting in front of you the assessor the one who's giving you marks okay you express him or hers i mean you express with little hesitation it means that um uh, uh no not much okay just a bit okay you you just express yourself okay can initiate maintain develop and close the conversation with ease okay you can start the conversation you can close the conversation like, like you know it's, it's very easy for you or something like that okay can relay a contribution you can contribute during the uh, discussion part, okay? You can negotiate the outcomes. You can really give ideas. Uh, then your communicative competence is six months. So remember all these grammar, vocab, and how well you can speak, okay? Now, part one. I'm not going to talk about part one because I think this is what you all can do. Part two. Part two is the individual long run. Individual long run, you have to speak for one hour, oh, sorry, one minute or one hour, one minute. I'm not going to talk about how it is conducted, okay? So what you can focus, okay? What you can focus, give information of a non-personal kind, okay? Talk about past, present or future experiences, you might be asked to talk about, explain, and give reasons. Okay? Justify your opinions. Why you say that? You might be asked to describe about people, places, and situation. Okay? You might also, what? You can also name personal characteristics, objects, and activities. Don't forget, paraphrase words and ideas. Don't always use, let's say you start with beautiful, you end also with beautiful. No, okay? Because remember the criteria, wide range of vocabulary, okay? So now, how you can prepare? You must be able to talk about the topic independently. Remember the word independently, yeah? If you want to get an A, this is the main word, independently. You can just speak and speak and speak. For about a minute, you must listen attentively to your partner's topic, okay? You must be able to answer questions about your partner's topic, okay? This one, marks not awarded, but then you still, like when they ask, you have to know what to answer and everything. So, how 
can you practice? Okay, those who say nervous teacher, afraid teacher, I'm an introvert teacher. What I would tell you, you know, okay, you take a question from any of your workbook. Okay, there are a lot of workbooks with a lot of questions for speaking. What you can do, you stand in front of your mirror. Stand in front of your mirror on your phone's timer. Okay, start speaking and on the timer and stop it when you have done for one minute and check. Maybe you can also record, okay, how you can improve these other ways, okay. This always I share with my students. You talk in front of the mirror, okay. You talk and talk and talk for one minute and then you stop and you listen to whatever you have said. And from listening, you will know, oh my God, how worse I have spoke. Okay, how can I improve for the next time? From doing this, you will surely improve. Okay, you still have time, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, my dear darling students, so you can practice this. Please practice in front of a mirror. Okay, then I think you all like, you all love doing TikToks, you all love doing Instagram posts, Facebook posts, and you are like, you know, tech savings, right? So why don't you use that technology to improve your speaking? So stand in front of a mirror, record whatever you say. Listen and improve. This is how or what you can do for another one or two months time. Okay? Don't forget, okay? Because your, uh, sorry, your uh, speaking is next month. Not one or two months, it's next month. Okay? So work. Every day practice in front of a mirror. Okay, now... Part two, individual run. Tip one, what you can do, be prepared to tell story, okay? You can think of story questions, okay? To prepare to describe people and places, events and incidents, okay? Remember to master the tenses. Make it interesting, use adjectives, okay? Use sequencing words. Remember, cohesive devices? Use all the prompts given. There are prompts, okay? Don't forget, okay? Don't forget. Please use. This one, not the full question. Eh? Uh, you can see the question in your workbooks, okay? There are prompts. Use all the prompts, okay? Don't forget, okay? Now, part three, the next part, discussion. Okay, how am I going to discuss, teacher? Remember, eh, discussion, you don't have much time to think, okay? And please don't be, sometimes some students, they like to be, uh, they like to take control of the whole situation. That A, I mean the student A will talk and talk and talk until he or she will not give time to the other one. So don't do that, okay? You must plan your task, okay? How are you going to do? And what type of questions can be asked? They can ask you, uh, I mean they can give you graphic organizers, okay? They can also give you pictures. Okay, so now I'm going to, okay, this is a type of question which is quite famous, graphic organizer. And this one is graphic organizer again and picture. Sometimes they might give you pictures. Okay, so how are you going to do? How? Okay, talk about each option. You have to talk about each option. Don't just talk about one, okay? You have to talk about everything, but you have to take turns. Remember the word, take turns, okay? All the five or six options, but including the advantages and disadvantages, decide which idea you would choose and give reason, okay? You will have 20 seconds, okay, to actually discuss with your partner, okay? The interlocutor will uh, tell you, okay, you have 20 seconds to discuss with your partner. In that 20 seconds, Decide with your partner which one uh, each one of you is going to take, okay? Decide your role, which part, okay? Example, this is A, this is B, this is C, D, sorry, A, B, A, B, and A, B. So, when A is your turn, you say, why people shop online? Because there's no crowd, you give reason, you justify why you say this. And then, you go to B. Okay, B will say this, and then A say this, then B say this, then A say this, B say this. Is it clear? Is it clear? You have to take turns, huh? don't just say, don't like A only talk, then only B comes in, no. You take turns, okay, you take turns, okay. Okay, now you can use this type of phrases, okay. 
You can read in your notes. Okay, justify. How can you justify? Please justify whatever you say. Okay, uh, don't just uh, don't, don't just merely state something. Okay. Yes, my dear, I'm coming to that point. Uh, Matthew does. Yes, I'm coming to that point. Okay, have you all realized this? Students, darlings, have you all realized the existence of this page in your textbook? Okay, if you are like, a teacher, I don't know what word to use. I don't know how to really speak, then go and look to this page. Page 187 in your textbook, download. Everything is here. How you can give opinion, agree, whatever sentence pattern you want, you can actually uh, remember or memorize or you can just uh, like, you know, read through all these things. It will, it will be very helpful, okay? Please take note, download page 187. Okay, now, and let's say you want to ask your partner, the one sitting beside you, you can't hear what he or she said, and then please don't be very rude. You can just use this type of sentences, I mean phrases. Could you say that again? Okay, don't go and say, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. don't, don't use all those things, yeah? Okay, now, yes, first part. As I told earlier, delegate the task, okay? Always delegate the task. Okay, now, how are you going to maintain the discussion? How? First, speaker one, A. A would start the discussion. Give your opinion, which one? Give your reason. Then, A, go ask, okay? Ask. A, ask B. Hi, how about you? Then B start. Say again, yes, I agree with you, but I also feel that. Okay. Then you give your reason. And again, it, you know, you just go in a circle form. Okay, you take turns and you do this again and again. Okay, now. Now, how you can start your discussion? Okay. Uh, if my partner not able to talk, could I help or need to get, okay. You must remember, yeah, the interlocutor or the assess assessor is not going to talk anything. Only the interlocutor, but he or she also cannot help you much. Unless he or she just read, I mean, just read the prompts given. So, let's say your partner cannot talk, okay. He or she is being mute or just keeping silent. You just talk. Maybe you can just ask the person, your partner, uh, hi, uh, do you agree? Uh, you ask that, do you agree? Um, how about you? Okay, you initiate the, uh, the discussion. Okay, this is how you start. Okay, you see here, start discussion. Example, Orisha is starting now, eh? candidate A. Shall I start first? Okay, you ask Matthew Dutch. Example, uh, Orisha is asking Matthew Dutch, can I, shall I start first? Okay. Absolutely, I agree with the idea that blah, blah, blah. You just give reasons, okay, why? And then give your opinion and then you agree. This is how you start, sorry, yeah. This is how the, the ways you can start your discussion. Let's say Orisha is asking, Matthew does, say, shall I start first? Okay, or you can just ask, absolutely, I totally agree with your idea when you start for the next point, okay? And how you give opinion? This is how you can use. What are the sentences? Okay, this is how you can give reasons. How you can ask your partner's opinion. Okay, and how you can maintain the discussion. Okay, introduce your new point. How are you going to introduce your new point? And it goes like this. Okay, agree or not agree. And then this is how you start. Okay, suggest your choice, give your opinion, give your reason, ask your partner's opinion. And then, speaker to tell, give reason, and ask the A. It continues, okay? Uh, no marks uh, get, uh, but you surely you did the best. So, surely you get the good marks compared to your partner. Right? Because you actually initiate and you try to help your student, I mean your partner to speak. Right? So, surely some, somehow it will be helpful for you to get 
marks, right? Because the other one is not speaking anything. But don't worry, it is not going to, uh, like what we say, uh, the mark, your marks is not going to be reduced, okay? So play your part. But somehow, try to help them also. And please don't be quiet, okay? Please don't be quiet. Uh, just say something, okay? Uh, in speaking, there's nothing wrong. Just say, but just give your uh, your reasons, your justification, okay, tips. You see here? I just said, there are no right or wrong answers, okay? But you should be able to give justification. Whatever you say, let's say, yeah, you say cats, what? Cats can't walk. Huh? Why can't walk? You give justification? Then, okay, okay, oh, okay, cats cannot walk. I have to accept. Something like that. Okay, take turns to speak. Remember, yeah, take turns to speak. Listen to your partner's opinion. Okay, respond by either agree or disagree. Always say, okay, let's say, uh, let's say, a is saying, okay, I I feel online shopping is time saving because blah blah blah. And the second person, the candidate B, have to say, yes, I agree with you. But I also feel that uh, what? Okay, please, okay, take turns. Okay, this one, two parts in discussion. You see, uh, someone asked me whether we have to decide or not. First, discuss all the six uh, bubble. You know, just now you saw the bubble, right? So all the six bubbles you have to say, okay? And then the second part you have to decide. Second part you have to decide. Okay. During the second part, uh, the interlocutor will say, okay, now decide the best reason or decide the best choice. And there's no time given for you to think. You have to start immediately when the interlocutor said, yes, you can start now. A or B can just start. You can say, yes, um, we feel the best choice is because one only, yeah? one only. And the second speaker must agree. You, don't, you know or you don't know, you have to agree. And you have to justify your uh, reasons why both of you agree to that particular uh, choice. Is it clear? Okay, you must reach a decision that you have negotiated. Okay, is it clear so far? Students, do you want to ask anything for uh, speaking? Do you want to ask anything for speaking paper? Because I'm going to move on to the listening paper. Thank you, Akhil. Any more question? <laughs> Clear job. Okay. Okay. So I'll move on to this listening paper now. Let's see if, okay. I will share. Yeah. Okay, sorry, yeah. Okay, come. Listening, is it? Can you view the slides? Is it? <clears throat> can I see the slides? Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, so now I have, okay, these are the references I used. Okay, so I think you would, you know uh, the format, so I'm not going to talk about this. Okay, it's all 40 minutes, 30 marks, okay? Okay, what are you going to do? Okay, please, okay, for pre-listening, okay. I know um, there are students who really struggle uh, to understand uh, listening questions, okay, to actually understand the audio, what are they trying to say, and also to figure out the correct answers, okay. You just remember one thing, okay, for CFR Form 5, they might use local and also foreign uh, speakers, okay? 
uh, they're not going to really use British accent, okay? They might use local and also uh, foreign accent, okay? And it is from um, uh, sorry, exam syndicates, okay? I'm not telling this, okay? So um, I think it is going to be not that tough, okay? You can still understand what are they trying to say, okay? Now, before you listen, remember always, okay? Before you listen, they will ask you to read the instruction. Read the instruction, read the questions and answer options quickly. Underline the keywords in the questions. Remember, okay? Very fast, do that, okay? Read the question, read the answer option. Underline whatever you feel it is the thing that you have to focus when you listen to the audio, okay? And then, next. First, listening. What are you supposed to do during the first listening? Listen for the specific information. You need to answer the questions, okay? Take note of the content and flow of information as delivered by the speaker or speakers. Take note of each possible option, okay? Always remember, eh? Beware that some of the most likely answers may be paraphrased, okay? So don't quickly uh, mark the answers, okay? Choose the most suitable answer for the question, okay? Now, second listening. What are you going to do during the second listening? Figure out the missing answer. Figure out the missing answer, okay? Listen for the information that only you missed, okay? And check your answers, okay? These are the steps you do during your pre-listening, first listening, and second listening. Okay, now, what are you going to do? For part one, what they want you to know in part one. What are they going to like, what they are testing you in part one. They want you to understand specific details, understand the main details, understand the specific information and details, and recognize independently attitudes or opinion. Okay, as you all know, there are seven different uh, audios will be played. And there are three options, multiple choice questions, and you have to choose the best answer. Okay, the tips for part one. Okay, when you listen to the recordings, when you listen to the audios, you will listen to people talking in seven different situations. Okay, actually they require you to work out how someone feels about a situation or a person. They want to, they just want you to know, okay? And then don't guess the answer options too quickly. Don't just immediately select the answer, okay? Sometimes the words are in the options, but that is not the correct answer, okay? So listen carefully to the words and expressions they use to work out which of the answer option is actually correct, okay? Remember to listen to their tone voice as well as what they say to really understand what are they trying to say, what are they trying to deliver, what is the main point of the um, what are the situation, okay? I think it's clear. Is it clear? Is it clear enough for part one? Okay, now part two. Okay, part two. I'm not going to do the sample uh, questions, okay? So I'm moving on to the part two. Okay, so part two again about the same. They want you to understand the main ideas and the specific information. Okay, so now part two. Do you all remember what type of question is in part two? You all remember? Okay, this is something like this, the questions, okay? where the whole thing is about one uh, situation or about one like um yeah about a situation where, a, a situation where you will hear melissa something like this raymond talking about her career as an as dividends so they're talking about something okay only one uh, situation one uh it's all about one thing okay it's not different situations as in part one okay so what are you going to do Again, remember, 
read through the questions carefully to get an idea what the recording will be, okay? Think about the information the questions have already given you. When you read the question itself, you already know what are they going to talk about, okay? Answer option also will tell you the content of the audio, okay? Don't panic if you read or hear some words that you don't understand, okay? Use context clues to identify the meaning, like, like you want to guess the meaning of the words you want to, um, you don't understand, okay? How to use context clues? Um, you, maybe you can find in the internet because I don't have much time to actually uh, explain context clues, okay? You can actually find uh, a lot of articles about how to guess meaning of unfamiliar words using context clues, okay? So, now, guess the meaning from the context, okay? And then, even if you can't, you still might be able to answer the questions correctly by eliminating the, the other three options. Remember, yeah, this thing, okay, this tip really would help you to find the correct answers. You can actually elim eliminate the wrong answers to choose the correct option, okay? With these ideas in mind, it will help you to choose the best option when you hear the conversation. For this part, okay, for part two, always remember, when you read the question, underline the key points. Example, why did Melissa choose to be an air stewardess? They want to know why she chose to be an air stewardess, okay? Sometimes they will use, okay, for example, uh, for this question, they might use all these words in the audio, but not all these are correct answer for this question. So don't be uh, trapped by the words used, okay? There are words they will use, but it doesn't mean that that is a correct answer, okay? So always listen and always underline the key points in the question before you listen for the first time, yeah? When you read pre-listening stage, remember pre-listening stage, underline all the key points, okay? Now, for part three, what are you supposed to do for part three? Okay, again, you see, listening is this. You have to understand the main idea, specific information. You have to guess the meaning of unfamiliar words and you have to recognize independently attitudes or opinions. So, part three. Do you know what is part three? Yes, there will be, sorry, there will be five speakers that will be talking about something. You have to know which one suits them. Sometimes they might sound similar. Okay, they might sound similar. You feel like, hey, they're talking about the same thing, but not, okay? You have to listen to the keywords, okay? Their emotions, their tones and everything, okay? Now, Listen to what each speaker says rather than focus on the words you read. You see? Don't just read. Focus on what they say. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> the speakers will be talking about the same topic. See, in that part, they're going to talk about the same topic. Example, if they talk about online shopping, all five speakers are going to talk about online shopping. By just that, maybe... Some, uh, one is going to talk about advantage. One is going to talk about disadvantage. Another one is going to talk about what is online shopping. So you have to know what the speaker is really saying or mentioning, okay? Sentence A to G will probably have a lot of things in common. This is what I am telling you, okay? There are things in common, okay? There are things in common for all these sentences. I mean, for all these options. But you have to choose which one is the correct one. <clears throat> okay? And then, yes, why not? Why not? Okay? Why not? You can. You can just write yes, of course. Okay? Read the sentences and underline the important words. Remember, again and again, I'm telling you, underline the important words. Okay? Okay? Identify how they differ from each other. Differ. Okay, what is the difference between what is the difference between A and B? Try to 
figure it out as fast as possible when you read the questions. Okay? And yes, and find the answers. Okay, now part four. Again and again, you have to understand the main ideas. Okay, all these things. Part four is where you have to write a word answer you have to write a word answer this is a bit tough for many students but always remember when you read the question during the pre-listening stage what you have to do you analyze the passage a bit, uh, sorry a bit okay you analyze the passage you yes no more than one word yes you analyze the paragraph. Example, this paragraph is about what? This paragraph is about what? Yes, it is about travel blogger. But he or she is talking about what? Analyze first before you listen. Why? This analyze will help you to identify the correct answer. And wait, I'll show you this. Okay. Listen, read the question. Okay. Think about what sort of words, what sort of words the answers might be. That way you will know what to listen out when you hear the recording. Write the word you hear. Okay, write the word you hear. You write what you hear. Don't change anything. Okay. You won't need to change any ending, stances, articles or anything else. Just a word. Okay, just a word. One word. So, you write. Okay, now. What are the things you can focus? Additional tips. See, pay attention to linkers. When you listen, listen to the linkers. Maybe there is a transition. So from there, you know they're talking about what? Okay, don't spend too much time on one question. We do not know. Just, just, just go on to the next one, okay? And return during the second listening. Okay, don't forget, okay. You must remember, you have to transfer the answers to the OMR form, okay? That's why they actually give you 40 uh, minutes, okay? Actually, there are six minutes extra, okay? There are extra six minutes for you to transfer your answers to the OMR form. Make sure when you transfer to the OMR form, you transfer it correctly, okay? Don't um, wrongly transfer. Please transfer it correctly with correct spelling and all those things. Okay, now. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, so it's going to end. So before that, so the additional tips for listening. Remember, focus on linkers, singular, plural, Okay, check the tenses. Okay, always check the tenses, singular, plural, linkers. And then uh, again, I'm going, I, I, I would like to tell you that you analyze a bit. Okay, the text or the passage is talking about what? Okay, it's about what? Okay, like example for this, she's talking about different cultures. This one is, she's talking about uh what she learned from traveling so this is how we analyze so when they when they speak about something you already know what are they going to talk okay and then always please uh, listen attentively and don't be very uh, stressful when you do not know how to guess the answers okay wait uh, i have two more minutes i will just teach you what is context clues okay what is context clues this one will be very helpful for your reading paper yeah uh, uh, and I think many of you would have known, okay, maybe your teacher would have shared, but this is just an additional tips. Okay, let's say when you read a passage, you do not understand any words in the paragraph. How are you going to uh, find the meaning of the words you do not understand? Okay, you can look for examples. You can look for, okay, wait, before this. Sorry, yeah. Before this, I would say this as ideas. Use ideas. Okay, what is ideas for? I for inference. Okay, you infer. 
you look for definitions, okay? You look for examples to find the meaning of the words which you do not understand. Antonyms, okay? And synonyms, okay? So, use these five, okay? In front, you infer the meaning of the word through the sentence before, after, okay? Try to infer and try to identify the meaning. Or you can find for some of the definitions maybe given, okay? So you can find, okay? Then you can identify the meaning. You can guess the meaning. You can use the examples given to guess the meaning, antonym or synonyms. So this is how you can actually find the meanings of the words you do not understand. So my dear students, can you please uh, write in the comment box for my session today, A, B or C. And let's say you have any good comments, you can write also. I'm okay. Thank you. For those who are not very sure certain parts, I'm very sorry because I know I can't cater everyone in two hours. Okay. Uh, but I tried my level best actually to explain whatever uh, or uh, things, tips, okay, for you to be to achieve A or A plus or even A minus in your SPM English paper. You can always approach me, okay? You can always uh, ask me questions, okay? Uh, you can find me in Instagram or uh, I think Facebook if you want, okay? And you can also please approach your teachers if you do not understand something or you need more clarifications and you need more explanations, okay? So that's all for today from me. Thank you very much for all the, to all the students really participative and spending your two hours with me. Okay, being cooperative. Thank you so much. Okay, and also I would like to thank all the teachers okay, for bearing with me for two hours. Thank you, everyone. Teacher Sarah, the students are asking, can you share your uh, Instagram ID oh, okay. or Telegram ID so that they can contact you? Sure, sure, sure. Mine is Teacher Sahara. Okay. Mm. Teacher Sahara. I do, okay, wait. I don't know whether it's capital letter or small letter, but you always can find me at Teacher Sahara. And my Facebook is Sahara Bude. Okay. So my Facebook and my Instagram. But I'm quite active in Instagram. So you can find me uh, at Teacher Sahara in Instagram. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Puan Shahra, for the very excellent presentation, two hours straight. Uh, is that your new record? Or... <laughs> 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 and for uh, students, don't forget to fill in the attendance forms eh, in the message box there. And uh, again, on behalf of JPM Pera and uh, Yasan yeah, Gipera, we like to say thank you to Puan Shahra. A very excellent, excellent, I mean, uh, I like from the management of writing and uh, and students, uh, for your information, I like to to, to write reviews, <laughs> right? Uh, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Astro also there's a lot of uh, reviewing of food, AFC channel, reviewing of uh, resorts, uh, National Geographic. So so you use that, you use that top up your uh, vocabulary skills. Uh, that one because it is apparent for. Uh, for English language, right? And again, uh, plan your layout. Yes, this one is very, uh, when, you know, when the teacher say, okay, anda boleh mula sekarang. Uh, you, 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 you are like the architect. You are the engineer, architect. Uh, and you also, you also the bancho cement on that. Uh, and then, uh, and of course, the best thing is closure because it is also your um, sincere suggestion right maybe advisors uh, and then yes it all resolve on the uh, teams in the CFA the, the, the environment that and okay so that's it for today i think next will be another subject for open classroom thank you very much to Puan Sahara and we in Pera will pray for you that uh, uh good luck in your phd uh, journey
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Actually, yeah. I have completed. Um, okay, so. Alhamdulillah. Uh, I've completed. I'm just waiting uh, for the letter, the official letter from USM. That's it. Okay, uh, good, good, my good. thesis has been approved. Right. Finally, after eight years, students. Now, wow. actually, I, I also struggle. Uh, just to share something, uh, nothing comes easily in life. Yes. So always remember that, okay, nothing comes easily in life. So uh, just keep uh, uh, keep working hard, okay, and then just keep with the flow and just go on and work hard and try your best, okay? And I wish all of you the best, okay? Yeah. And saw the best. Uh, and last thing, be, be as cheerful as Dr. Zahra. Thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum. Salam. Assalamualaikum. Okay, so don't forget to fill in the attendance form, guys. So I uh, think you'll be getting Thank you, Madam Sahara. Most welcome, teacher. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye. See you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, students. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, Mr. Faisal. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you.